Uh, when it comes to the race for governor, the clear front runner at this point is Andrew Cuomo. But there are also a handful of other candidates who are seeking the seat, including my next guest, who hopes his name will be on the ballot come November. Warren Redlick is the Libertarian candidate for governor, and he's joining us in the studio to talk about his campaign. How are you? Good, thank you. Welcome. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. So let's just uh, talk a little bit about you. You are an elected official from Gilderland. Yes. You are a Republican. I'm a registered Republican. But you are not going to seek, you have not filed petitions to seek the Republican line. Correct. We, um, I was planning to, to file petitions, and we just realized before petitioning started we didn't have the resources to get those signatures. Okay, but the, but the limit is the same, right? For an independent petitioning period, it's 15,000. 15,000 for the regular period to get on a major party line. So if you can't do it now, what makes you think you're gonna be able to do it later? Sure. Libertarian signatures are easy, are easier. To get Republican petitions, you need Republicans to carry the petitions and Republicans to sign the petitions. Mm, right. For libertarian petitions, any registered voter can carry and any registered voter can sign. So the difference is for Republican, you really need to go door to door. For independent type petitions like this you can go to events and get a large number of people to sign and you could get you know 10 signatures in the same time it would take you to get two on the Republican line. So you've actually been a candidate on a number of occasions for <laughs> your candidate for I'm sorry your it's candidate true. for Congress twice yes. right and then uh, did you get on the ballot I can't remember how this went. Republican I, I was the I was the Republican candidate for Congress in 2004 and 2006 and when you're the candidate the party helps you get signatures and it's not a problem. In which district was that again? The 21st Congressional District where we are now it used to be Mike McNulty's seat right, right, right. now Paul Tonko's there and Ted Danz is running against him. Right and you're not a congressman, so we not, not we, can, yet. we can tell that it didn't work out so well for you. Well, the first election in 2004, I got 30 percent of the vote, which doesn't sound like a lot, but the previous seven races before that, the challengers had gotten 25 percent of the vote. Okay, so why not then focus there? It seems like you were going up to a, a way that you were building up momentum. I mean, this is how it usually goes, right? <laughs> Local elected official to Congress, maybe it doesn't work out the first time, maybe it doesn't work out the second time, but this is supposed to be a big Republican year. I mean, why not run for legislature for for example, I'm sure that that probably would have been a lot easier state legislature than well, is. Well, no. I, what happened was I wasn't planning on running for anything. And some friends of mine in the Libertarian Party and some Republican friends said, hey, why don't you run for governor? Which, of course, at first I thought they were crazy, and now I think I'm crazy. But I started <laughs> researching the governor's race. And I started looking for, okay, because my theme in my two congressional races was stop wasting money. So I started looking for, okay, I've never really looked at the state budget before. Let's take a look and see where we're spending money. And I was pretty surprised at how badly our state is wasting money. And so I had something I felt I could talk about and bring to the table. And the, the idea is for the libertarians, if I can get 1% of the voter, 50,000 votes, which is about 1%, then the libertarians will get a ballot line, which they've never had. Right. And that makes life easier for libertarians for the next four years. So is that your goal? I mean, your goal is to establish the libertarians as a bona fide party. Um, it certainly, I, I, I would love to win. <laughs> but realistically speaking, that doesn't look likely. Um, but as a practical goal, getting 50,000 votes, I think is very reasonable. There was a poll in March, and I had 3% of the vote, 3 to 4% of the vote, which was about 150,000 votes. So if that poll holds true, then we'll get that 1%, and that's big. So before we talk about your resources, I mean, one of the things that you get to do as sort of an outsider candidate, if you will, or, or a protest candidate, or whatever it is that we, we might call you, is you get to have a little fun. And you had a little fun with a web ad that I want to play a little bit of uh, right now for Sounds the viewers. Good. Okay? Yes. Let's look at that clip. Here it is. Is it the shoe? No, Sooch. <laughs> it's got to be the shoes. LeBron Redlick is about to make a big decision. <laughs> He's a great ball player and a marketing machine. Okay. Now he's the hottest free agent in America. But where will LeBron... Okay, run? so um, that's interesting. Can you really jump that high? Uh, yes, uh, when the hoop is set low. Is that how you did that? Well, the hoop, the real hoop that you saw in the video was set at eight and a half feet. And yes, I can dunk. That's on my, that's on my driveway. And yes, I can dunk on an eight and a half and even a nine foot hoop. And but the hoop that, I actually, that you actually see me dunk on is my daughter's, my five-year-old daughter's hoop, which is set at five and a half feet. And we should say, in the interest of full disclosure, those really are your shoes. You're actually wearing them right now. I am. But in, in all joking aside, though, there's actually a serious message to this video. At the end of it, you talk a little bit about your message, your campaign platform, which is really about the waste and, and the, fr and the sure. spend wasteful spending that there is at, in the state government. Yeah, and I think people aren't aware of things like, I ask people, what do you think the head of the New York Public Library makes? 
and typical response might be 100, 150,000. When I tell people he makes $689,000 a year, people are kind of surprised by that. And there's 90,000 bureaucrats in New York State who make over $100,000 a year. We can save a lot of money if we just agree that public sector pay should be kept at $100,000 a year. And I'll tell you, some people get really mad when I say that. I imagine there are people throwing things at the television right now. <laughs> the people who make over $100,000 a year, or maybe they make ninety-five and they think they're going to they get to 100000 But when you talk to regular people, they, they can't believe that so many people are making that much money. And you'll hear lines like, well, you won't be able to get good people if you only pay 100000 a year. And you want to hear, see people throwing stuff at the television. You tell the people watching this that we can't get good people if we don't pay more than 100000 a year, and they're going to be laughing. That's ridiculous. So that's, that's the issue. That's a big issue. And, you know, economic development, they call it economic development. It's really corporate welfare. Three billion dollars a year. We can save a lot of money in the state. Okay, so how much money do you have in your campaign account right now? I think we have about $5,000. Okay, that's not a lot. No, no, but, you know, th there's a practical reality. You know, Andrew Cuomo got a $55,000 contribution from a parking lot. I'm not in bed with the special interests. From a parking lot, from people who run a parking lot? From West 37th Street Parking LLC. That's right. the name. And it's at 318 West 37th Street. We shot a video there. It's one of our other videos on YouTube. I've seen it. Um, and, you know, if you want somebody who's in, in bed with the special interests, then you get somebody like Andrew Cuomo or Rick Lazio. And one of the challenges, I would say this, one of the challenges for me as a third party candidate, uh, independent type candidate, people say they don't want professional politicians. They say they're tired of that. They don't want people who's in, who are in bed with the special interests. And then people will, will, not just with me, but with other candidates, they'll say, hey, when are you coming to Olean? They expect you to go all over the state. So for basically six months of your life, you can't have a job, which means if all you're doing is campaigning, you're a professional politician. Yeah. And then they how come you're not advertising more? Well, advertising costs money. Where do you get the money? Special interests. So people say they don't want professional politicians, and they don't want people who are in bed with the special interests. But the only way that they're going to vote for you is if they know about you, and, if you, and, and they, they don't consider you a serious candidate unless you travel. But this also doesn't, this, these kind of third party candidacies rarely work. I mean, you see, for example, Jesse Ventura is the, is the, was the Reform Party sure. candidate, and he wor it worked for him in uh, Minnesota. He was a name. The he man was a little was a, more famous. Yeah, just a little. And I, I, maybe a BOA. Uh, you know, you might think about it. He's a little it. stronger. But um, sir, in all seriousness, w why bother? I mean, you have you take the time out, even if you can't campaign and you can't go around and you have a job and you can't go around and and uh, and meet all these people and you're not going to win probably unless lightning strikes and some major event happens. I mean, you know, anything's possible, but <laughs> you're probably not going to win. Why bother? Well, I think democracy is about people choosing, and if there are no candidates or if there's only one candidate, or if there are meaningless candidates, then the people don't have a choice. So, and I think, um, I think 1% is low. I think we're going to do better than that. Like I said, we already polled at 3 to 4%. And this video that you showed is getting a lot of views on YouTube. I think the fact that LeBron James' name is in it gets it a lot of views on YouTube. I don't, it could be the shoes. <laughs> but I think it's really LeBron James' name that helps. Right. And, uh, you know, if a lot of people become aware of the candidacy, when people hear my message, you know, I, I spoke at some Tea Party events. I got a lot of applause for what I had to say. People really believe it, that the stop wasting money message is key. When you look at the central candidates, they don't have anything to say. So, you know, if I only get 1%, it doesn't do that much. But what if I get 5%? It sends a message. And that's, I think, the thing voters need to understand. You know, we have a year. People say, don't waste your vote on a third party candidate. You know what? This year, that's out the window because everybody figures Cuomo's going to win anyway. So why waste your vote on Rick Lazio when nobody believes in him? Mm. Why waste your vote on Carl Palladino, who's just going to send another inappropriate email? Why not vote for somebody who says something you really agree with, like stop wasting money and backing it up? I mean, there's a real big difference. You look at these other candidates, they say things about spending, but they're not specific. You go to my campaign website, I'm very specific. This agency gets cut. This agency gets cut. You know who gets fired. No other candidate has the guts to tell you who's getting fired. Well, you also, the Libertarians say that they're going to sp put some resources into your race. You're going to mm -hmm. do a petition drive. It's due. The petitions are due in August, so we'll see if you get on the ballot. We will check back with you. And in the meantime, you're, give out your website address in case people want to the know. The website address is w-r-e-d-l-i-c-h dot com. And if you want to get to the campaign page, it's slash ny. Or okay. you can just Google stop wasting money. Or you could Google uh, LeBron James on YouTube, on YouTube. <laughs> and Warren Red. Like, I want to thank you very much for coming in. It's very good of you to make the time. Thanks. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Take care.